Hi, Jason Tanner here with MSU Northern. We're in the machine shop lab. Uh, today we're going over our lab exercise for repair and maintenance where we have built up the shaft and now we're going to machine it down. Um, first thing, where do we start? How do we know what type of surface feed and speed to use? What feed rate should we use? Well, we reference the book, okay? If we go to the book, and we, we're doing a plain carbon steel shaft, it's in the blue section. So whatever material you're machining, there's a section in this book for it. It tells you what grade of carbide to use, how fast to run it, what depth to cut. So of course one plain carbon, so we want to go to the blue section, which is right up front. Low carbon steel, and if you look, we got a 1018 shaft right there, okay? So we're gonna be lightly interrupted because we're a weld and it says use a KC 935 or very depth 9025, 9025. So where do we run it at? If you look over here and you go to the MTLF, you can see that the maximum depth of cut we can take is 1 8th. The minimum is right around 25. That's the optimal range. And then if we go over here to this next point, it'll tell us what surface feed run. So we're gonna use a KC 925. We come over here and then it tells us, so we're lightly interrupted and we go up, it says we can run right around 800 surface feet right in that area. We're not gonna run that fast. We're probably gonna run down to the 400 surface feet area just because we're machining a weld and it's not very, it doesn't machine as well as the shaft does. So we're gonna run a lower surface feet, but it's always a good starting point. Where do I start out? Don't ever go above the recommendations, but you can always go below them. Okay, so now that we got that, I am taking a five and a half thousandths chip load. So if you look at your chart here, and we go to five, I'm on B, and then letter B right here, in the G section, so I'll be over here in G, Come over here to D1, I'm in D1. And that says 0 .0053, roughly five and a half thousand. So that's my feed rate. My spindle speed rate, I have a machining calculator and it shows you the cutter diameter, which is going to be our workpiece. So if we go to inch and three eighths, and we look right around two to 400 surface feet, we can run up to 1,000. We're only running 600, so we're running right around 200 surface feet on our shaft. So we know we're in the range of our surface feet, we're below it, we're not gonna burn our carbide up, and it should machine just fine. Now, as you notice, I have my PPE on. I have my safety glasses. I have hearing protection if I need them. I'm wearing tight-fitting clothes, so nothing's gonna get caught and tangle up in the lathe. If you have long hair, you wanna pull it back so your hair don't wrap up in that shaft and it'll, it'll just rip the hair right out of your head and it's uh, very dangerous, so we wanna make sure our clothes are tight. We don't have long, loose-fitting clothes. Uh, anything that's gonna get tangled up in the lathe as we're running it. Um, we have a safety shield. It has to be down in order for it to start. On-off switch is right there. Emergency stop there. And then there's also a foot brake here. So if there's something happened, just hit the foot brake and it'll stop the lathe. Here's an example. We're running. Stops the lathe. Okay. And you have to, of course, take it, put it back out, and turn it back on before it goes. Okay, now that we have that set, we have our tool set. Okay, on my setup, I have my 1018 shaft clamped in the chuck. I have my tail stock up here with my center in my center hole. Keeps the shaft straight and from deflection and pushing away when you're machining it. Um, I have my tool just below center. So just below center because I'm on the OD of turning. If I was boring the ID, I'd want to be just a little bit above center. Okay. So right now, I'm just a little bit below center. I'll go over that in class. I'll show you how to do it. Um, 
So we're pretty much ready to go ahead and machine the weld off this shaft and turn it back to normal. Okay, now we're getting ready to turn our shaft. I have my tool set, you can see my tool right here. I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna touch the highest point on my welds. I'm gonna find the highest point, just touch, and then I'm gonna back off, I'm gonna take 30 and then take a cut. Okay, so here it goes. We're gonna go and touch off. Just cut. So now I'm going to take 30 thousandths. Come over here. This is where you engage your feet straight up. And it will start taking the cut. Now it might not hit anything for the first bit, but once it gets to the higher spot, it's going to hit. So it's very important to always touch your highest spot first. Disengage it when you're done with the cut. Back up. Take another 30. Engage it. If I would have touched off here and started, I would have been taking a really heavy cut back there and I could have pushed the shaft back into the chuck. roughly 20 thousandths left to go, so I'm only going to take 10. Okay, now we should be able to go ahead and take our finished final cut. Okay, now I'm close. So now I'm going to go ahead and measure it and see where I'm at. one to two inch micrometer. So our shaft is inch and three eighths. And if you measure the shaft, we are roughly a half thousand to a thousandth under inch and three eighths. So that's what we have to end up, the same as the shaft. And right now, we're one inch, 300, and 75 plus 12, which is 87, right? So we have 12 thousandths left to take off, almost 13, because we want to be a thousandth under. So I'm going to take 13 thousandths. Okay, now we should be to size. Close enough to where we can sandpaper it in. So right now I am two thousandths under. So I'm one thousandth under what the original shaft is, which is okay. The bearing will still write on there and everything will be just fine. So this is complete. Right where it's at. If it was just a little bit over, what I would do is I'd take just a little piece of sandpaper and come under here and just sand it a little bit. You want to be careful not to do this because what will happen is it will wrap up and it will suck your hands right into the shaft. So you always want to make sure that you're just touching the bottom of it like this. And that's the completion of the project. Thanks for watching.